Blood Realm? I thought it said Boob Realm. What a disappointment. Boots and cats and boots and cats and what's up everybody? It's me, Double A, and I got Blood Realm, issue number five, also part two of three, published by Alterna, and written, drawn, inked, colored, and lettered by Robert Geronimo, the great Robert Geronimo. Folks, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I love this book, and I'd recommend it to anybody. I'd recommend it to uh, that meter maid who gave you an $80 ticket. I'd recommend it to your uncle, who no longer comes to Thanksgiving dinner. I'd recommend it to anybody. It's a great book. Uh, it's published by Alterna Comics, and it's a nice little flippy-floppy on flippy-floppy newsprint. Uh, it's a nice... I, I like this feel. It feels like I'm holding on to something old and valuable. And this is valuable, but it's very new, very fresh. Uh, so Robert Geronimo has got himself a great little sto couple storylines here in the Blood Realm. It's been described as Tolkien-like, and I guess in scale and scope it is, but in tone and tenor, very much not so. This is a horror fantasy, and it is done very well. This particular storyline, it's sort of Lovecraftian, or I would call it Lovecraftish. There are elements that you could definitely see in a Lovecraft story, but you couldn't necessarily pull from one story and say, oh, this is what this is. It's not Shadow over Innsmouth. It's not Dunwich Horror. It's not the doom that came unto Sarnath, but it is in some part inspired by that. I think Robert Geronimo would probably say that he's a Lovecraft, uh, if not a Lovecraft lover, maybe a, a Lovecraft enthusiast. Uh, anyway, let's get into the book. You might be asking why I'm doing issue five. It's because I want to. And also because I think this issue really shows off a lot of Geronimo's creative skills. So let's crack right into it. First off, dialogue. This is where he kind of breaks away from a lot of the uh, tropes of Lovecraft and Tolkien. The dialogue's accessible. There is a place in hell called the Gash, existing beneath the great root of the earth, where life had first sprung. The Satrians believed it is where slumbering giants dwell, awaiting to be summoned at the world quake, to purge Mordren of its civilization so the gods can start anew. But this was not the underworld, nor a place of slumbering giants. This place was far worse. So the language in the script, the dialogue, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of internal monologue, really. But it's, it's not super flowery. It's not super complicated. You don't need a PhD to read it. It's accessible. That's the biggest problem that a lot of people have with Tolkien and Lovecraft, to which I say, hmm, sucks to be you. But for... <laughs> For the average reader reading a comic book, this is great. Very accessible. Now, let's just take a look. Uh, this page really nicely displays Geronimo's art style in this particular book. Uh, there are three colors used. Black, a whole lot of black. White and red. Uh, plenty of inks on lots of pages. Plenty of ink. And uh, it's, it's noticeable when there's not a lot of ink there. So it creates different feelings as you're reading along. You know, lots of ink. Uh, creates feelings of despair, darkness, some feelings of claustrophobia as a read-along, uh, and uh, adversely on the other end. Uh, when there aren't so many inks, all of a sudden uh, you get this uh, feeling of vastness or vast emptiness, openness. Um, in this case, we have red as well. Red is used in uh, many different ways in these books. Um, as you can see here, it's meant to sort of the uh, accentuate the hollowness of this uh, little underground city, this underground cavern. Um, sometimes it can be used to accent things in the background or the foreground. Sometimes it's used to accent a specific item, like an iris, for example. Rarely is it used for blood, which I find interesting. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, dig this art. It's so cool. Uh, Storyline of this particular story is that uh, these guys, the Satrians, which are these goat people, are on a quest with this uh, sorcerer mage named Olek. Now, from what I remember, Olek is part of a race of uh, creatures that were subservient to the Satrians because they made a deal with the Satrians, but then the Satrians are kind of like, all right, this deal goes on in perpetuity. Um, the Satrians, I think, in the world in general are the villains. In this particular book, they're the 
some of the protagonists, you know. So Oleg takes them to this lost city called Arcos, the lost city of the Iron Wolves. Now, the Iron Wolves have story significance, I believe, in the first three issues, but definitely in this one. Uh, the Iron Wolves basically uh, got together and banished something that was real bad. This guy named Archdemon Targanus. And uh, they did a good job of it. But then, uh, you know, everybody in the city kind of forgot. <laughs> or uh, what does it say? Arcos was once a thriving city in the second capital of the Vorogothian Empire. After the fall of Chiron Morville, its people fell desperate, fearing their great leader would not return and sought salvation in forbidden deities. Yeah, so what's that saying? Um, bad times create strong men, strong men create... Good times, good times create weak men. So yeah, the people of the city, uh, they started worshipping some bad folks. And as you can imagine, that guy, uh, Targanus, was kind of one of them. Um, so, oof, just dig this art, man. See? See what I'm talking about? Like, got like a sort of light halo ring of red around here. Got one that kind of, sort of accentuates the background here, the floor, rather. And then uh, you've got uh, one red eye. And then one red guy. A red eye and a red guy. <laughs> um, the color is used to great effect. Um, I, I, I like this. I don't want to call it simple because I feel like when I say simple, it sounds like uh, bad or not hardworking. It's a lot of work in this, man. It looks so cool. Uh, so then, as you can imagine, there are some real bad oogie boogies that come down and start uh, tearing people apart. Um, I'm not going to reveal what these guys are. Any... You might be able to guess ahead of time. Um, they look pretty cool. They look uh, somewhat xenomorph-inspired. That might just be the eyelessness talking, but they're, like, lumpy and fleshy. Really cool. So, uh, the mage, he does, like, his spirit bomb <laughs> or whatever. Uh, spirit bomb so powerful that it takes him to this uh, whole new realm. Yeah, it's a place called the Tether. Here he is here. So... Look at this, super effective. These fat inks with these uh, critters that look like uh, they're simultaneously on the cover of a copy of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark as well as inside a Tim Burton sketchbook. <laughs> you know, they got these little root wiggly arms. So the tether, it's a bad place. And you send bad people over there. Like Archdemon Targanus. <sighs> This is fantastic. This is fantastic. And look, it can be yours for $1.99. I'd buy that for a dollar ninety-nine. It's so cool. Uh you can find this on Alterna's website. You can also get the super size, I forget what they're called. Super duper books. Anyway, they're larger than the normal book, and they contain like all three issues in each storyline. So basically each storyline is separated into three issues. Um, as far as like lettering issues, I don't know, man, Geronimo should become a professional letterer because the only mistake I remember seeing was one, and I don't think it was in this book. I think it was in the last storyline where I think he might've misspelled one of his character names. <laughs> and I didn't know if it was actually intentional or not. You know, like you've got Sauron and Saruman. It's like really close names. Like maybe it's a different guy, but maybe not. I don't know. I feel like Gandalf should have seen that coming. Like, a guy whose name is that close to Sauron, probably not a good dude. Anyway, this is a total recommend. Go find it. And, uh, yeah, he's got Wirehead coming out right now. Wirehead, uh, so far the reviews are good. I'm looking forward to mine. Uh, and he's got Blood Realm Volume 4 coming out as well. Um, so make sure to check in for that. And I think Alterna is also releasing uh, Volume 3's issues um look out for it man blood realm's great anyway uh go ahead and like subscribe share if you care uh, comment below bye <laughs>